position. Meanwhile, your laryngoscope should be on. You insert the blade very gently, holding the laryngoscope lightly in case you damage teeth on the way in. And then as you need to apply more pressure to come around the corner, you put the power grip on with your thumb parallel to the body of the laryngoscope. You can then insert the forceps and very gently remove the offending foreign body. OK. All right, we've had a good look through the procedure now and we've considered some of the concerns uh, regarding the, uh, uh, the management of airway problems. OK, then, let's imagine then that we are two molecules of oxygen in this cylinder and uh, we're about to enter the circuit. Let's take a journey through the circuit. And... The oxygen comes from the flow meter through the white tube and turning it out again, that then connects to this long pipe assembly and then enters the machine on the top, up that pole. So in fact the Glasgow Coma score is, or the Glasgow Coma scale, is the only scale in the world that gives three for a dead person. <laughs> yes. right? So the dead person scores three. He scores one for no verbal response, one for no motor response, and one for no eye opening. Mm -hmm. all right? Starting with a the newborn then, would you explain these differences in normal physiological values? Certainly. We can also see that her respiratory rate is relatively high at approximately 25 to 40 breaths a minute and it is somewhat irregular. And if we feel a pulse, for example, here in the arm, it's of a rate approximately 100 to 160 breaths per minute. Mm -hmm. Those are essentially the most important differences in the newborn period. The Ledal bag and mask resuscitator has now been introduced into all ambulances in Victoria as standard equipment. I wonder if you would uh, describe the parts to the uh, resuscitator for us, Dr. Tools. Yeah. The capacity of the ventilation bag here is 500 millilitres. Over the past few CEP units, we have reviewed and updated many of the basic principles of patient care. From the sessions we do all around the country, we know that uh, asthma is by and large under-treated rather than over-treated and uh, uh, obviously there's educated needed for patients and doctors and health givers uh, to make the treatment more aggressive. And patients don't know how sick they are, they can't tell. They get used to being short of breath and wheezing and uh, they've got no plan to be able to cope with the crisis that often arises. <laughs> Nocturnal breathing difficulties in asthma is a common problem, often unrelieved by self-administered medication. In severe asthma, early intervention and hospital management is vital. To begin with, the patient is postured, sitting, and is reassured and informed of the procedure. Five mils will provide approximately 10 minutes of administration. Before reconnecting the nebulizer, ensure that it is misting. Reconnect the nebulizer and check to ensure the patient is breathing with mouth open and mask is fitting snugly. Continue reassurance. Uh, we've had only uh, positive um, messages about the implementation of uh, nebulized salbutamol by the ambulance service, both by general road cars and by MICA crews. By ministerial determination, the Ambulance Service Victoria will become the primary agency for the transport of psychiatric patients. In the Autumn Session of Parliament 1990, a number of amendments were passed to the Mental Health Act 1986. This training video has been designed to assist in the clinical update, the psychiatric patient, for all ambulance officers in conjunction with their workbook. <laughs> you don't know what they were. You're not going to die, you're not going to die. Where are the pills that you've taken? Where are the pills that you've taken? In the bathroom. In the bathroom. All right, I'll go and have a look. Never leave the patient alone once you have established rapport. Listen, my love, I know you're very upset. Can you share a bit of your feelings with me? What actually happened this morning? Lying, you lying, you lying, you lying, you lying. Look, I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> you liar! If you have any difficulties, seek the assistance of your training officer. And most recently, we introduced the statewide monitoring and defibrillation program. 
the first sequence provides a review of the electrical conducting system, the normal ECG, and the essential dysrhythmia related to cardiac arrest. The second part of the program deals with the technique of defibrillation. And when a DC electrical shock is passed through the heart, all myocardial cells are momentarily and simultaneously depolarized. Once depolarization has occurred, the SA node, having the greatest degree of automaticity, should resume as the dominant pacemaker and establish cardiac rhythm. Place your top hand over the lower hand and perform chest compressions. This is done by pushing down vertically over the sternum, which compresses the heart between the sternum and vertebral column, causing a forward movement of blood. Good morning, ambulance service. You're reporting an emergency. Yarra Park. Yeah, what's wrong there? City. An unconscious collapse there. Performing CPR. Signal I think. Welcome to Ambulance Update 9, presenting items of interest related to ambulance practice. This program is made possible through the sponsorship of Ford Australia. Visit Mildura, Swan Hill, Echuca, Bendigo, Ballarat, Horsham and Morwell. And those figures would show that across the state we're averaging just on 20% success as I've just defined. Now this scale is called the Life Events Scale. Using this scale we have a way of evaluating how much stress people are experiencing. We have taken a random sample of 500 officers from across the state to take part in the study. So those will be the two important things or two important outcomes from this project. One is a way of measuring stress and the other is improving the training program for ambulance officers to um, cope with stress. <laughs> Parked behind here is the French-built twin-engine Dauphin helicopter. The machine is operated basically by a police pilot and observer with a microambulance officer in the back. Primarily we need that area to land to to ensure the safe arrival of the flight. This book describes the current global traffic injury problem, examines the factors influencing this situation and forecasts developments to the turn of the century. Although wearing a helmet is important, it's also very important to display the correct type of uh, road user behaviour. The helmet shouldn't move too far forward, thus um, creating a bit of a vision problem, or too far back, exposing their forehead. With excellent illustrations to accompany the text, this book is great value for around $30. As well as the Baisha, there are some other recent publications. For... We'll take the opportunity to meet Mr John Stevens, key staff members, and obtain an insight into their various roles. We now have uh, commissioned a UHF network to, to cover all of Melbourne. It um, involves uh, many more high reliability and high quality channels and that will come into uh, use in the next uh, few months. Um, in rural areas of Victoria we're now um, called tenders for the supply of a VHF communication network that will uh, greatly enhance communication between ambulance vehicles and their control rooms. The management and supervision team have had an active role in working with line management on the identification of training needs. This has enabled us to develop and conduct training events which have specific relevance to the organisation. Our key question is, how do we find that person and how do we make them the sort of manager they need to be to deliver our service to the public? This course will present a rigorous study and experience program. The EDC is conducted over an approximate five month period and comprises five basic units of study and activity. These are organisation and management, human resources management, communication skills, project research and operations management with a variety of practical sessions and outdoor exercises. 
overall a total of 224 sessions. Media relations. Who better to learn from than the professionals themselves? What's your impression of where the ambulance is headed? The ambulance services uh, really developed quite dramatically over the last 20 years. So you're saying it was the ambulance officer's fault for no, allowing this man on board? Well, it's not a fault in that sense. I think there's a, there's a need for them to be more careful. You can understand that when they're working with children, everybody's working very quickly. And, uh... Chris, just how concerned are you that the two ambulance officers who were involved in this crash weren't exactly obeying the law? Well, at this present time, I can't comment on that because, uh, in actual fact, that needs for the TOG and the police to have their uh, investigations and also our own investigations into that situation. The AOTC staff have worked solidly to ensure that we can meet the needs of the profession and maintain uh, the high standards of our service. Organisationally, I'd uh, like to develop a strategic plan for Metropolitan, more managerial training for operational staff initially. I'd like to improve the financial management of Metropolitan Ambulance Service. And the other thing that I believe is very important that uh, we need to address, and that is succession planning within the organisation. So we went out and sought uh, support from other organisations that we received such overwhelming support from them and such enthusiasm that it steadily grew. In fact, it, it got to a snowballing stage where we certainly had a lot of support from the, the ambulance officer wanting to be involved in promotion. Very, very encouraging to see the enthusiasm that most of these organisations, volunteer groups and corporations responded to assist us in a health and safety display. Good. One of the major things that's happened was the letting of a new contract to Sun State Airlines of Mildura. While in June, the new complex was opened by the Minister of Health. At the present time, we are working on a training program for both fixed wing and rotary wing, which we hope will start early November. When it comes to safety, stop and think for a moment. Minimise the risk of injury. Whilst building sites are high-risk areas, in particular high-rise construction, safety officers on the site need your help if they are going to be able to help you. Make certain that someone knows where you are. And of course, never enter a hard hat zone without your hard hat. The teamwork on site between the safety officers and health and safety representatives, along with the ambulance service, ensures rapid and effective management in the event of a worker being injured. In this exhibition, we look at some 55 years of Albert Tucker's artistic life. The images of modern evil, they occurred uh, I would say squeezed out under all these historical and social pressures and then the Australian nostalgic memories took over. One of the forms that emerged as you would know is the uh, as a kind of hatchet uh, uh, antipodean head. John Olson is one of Australia's most accomplished artists. His whole output is characterized by an extraordinary vitality and inventiveness. The story is um of Joe Lynch, who is a friend of Slessor's. And the Ephew country is an aesthetic idea.
but only inside my head. Depression plays its part, frustration tears at mind. I'm a backseat driver. Here, young cream. And a Tim Tam? And a Tim Tam, but only on delivery. And make sure he's got the cheese grater with him. He's no use to me without the cheese grater. somewhere else. 